what is up people so uh, we are going to do part 2 of the video we did yesterday which is a reaction to science behind indian rituals they are apparently surprisingly scientific so we're going to start from the midpoint of the video and go towards the end we already marked these fallacies already in the video let's see if we can get bingo seen lemon and chilies hanging on the trucks cars shops etc haven't been the belief is that it wards off evil spirits practically local restaurants place this combo on the table to save their customers any trouble from the insects that may hover around for food how does a chili that's unopened uncut and a, a closed lemon actually ward off insects I'm not sure about this do they have insect repellent properties i have to look this up why not i do that right now i don't want some ayurvedic website because i'm sure they'll say it's an insect repellent okay lemon does seem to be uh, an insect repellent yeah i don't think there's an ayurveda site yeah uh, oil it says oil of lemon eucalyptus so i'm not very sure this is very hard to look up i i will need a couple of hours for this yeah, if someone actually knows please let me know in the comments i'm going to continue watching the video the active heat producing ingredient capsaicin repels mosquitoes and flies because it is an irritant wait one second capsaicin i will search that capsaicin is the uh, is found in chili hmm it looks like capsaicin is an insect repellent but where is the capsaicin in a chili that hasn't been cut if you have a chili like this there's no capsaicin capsaicin is inside the chili which would makes it hot you don't cut the chili and put it in your mouth you won't feel hot there's no capsaicin indian capsaicin repels mosquitoes and flies because it is an irritant more interestingly centuries ago when people had to undertake long travels on foot they often had to traverse through a variety of landscapes and encounter the threats of predators and inconsistent water supply to combat these issues it seems our traveling heroes carried our good old nimbu mirchi with them the lemon was meant to keep them hydrated while the chili could be used to check if snake bites were why don't you carry water with you why don't you carry like Okay, but there was no bottles, but a small pot or something of water instead of the lemon. How hydrating is this? Were venomous or not? It was believed that oh, wait, whether it could be used to check if snake bites were venomous or not. What? Why would you want to check if the snake was venomous rather than cure the venomous bite? It was believed that when the traveler bit on chili and couldn't taste it, it would indicate that the snake was poisonous and numbed his or her nerves. Smart, isn't it? I don't think so. I I think it's really dumb, in fact. And uh, also, these are extraordinary claims. I don't have that card with no evidence. People, if you get bitten by a snake, don't do this drama, please. Please get anti venom. Every day Indians would welcome the sun, the source of life on this planet by their water offering ritual. Well, there are great benefits to this practice backed up with scientific What is poured on the ground? How is it offered to the sun? Significance. When the sunlight passes through water, it breaks down into a spectrum of seven colors. There's no instruction to point this water at the sun. How is the sun is below Dude, this diagram itself is wrong, and it doesn't randomly break down, uh, you know, sunlight into all these colors. It has to pass at an, at a particular angle. That's why you see a rainbow only when the sun and the rain make that particular angle with your eyes. You see a rainbow only in the parts of the sky where that angle gets subtended in your eyes. I think for water, for that refractive index, it's something like forty something degrees. I forgot. But you pour water down that doesn't happen. You don't see a rainbow through water. That's a stream of water that's falling down. It is in this form that the sun's energy is absorbed maximum by our body. It helps What? What are you saying? Do you have any evidence for what you're claiming? I think you read this somewhere and confirmed your own bias. I will mark con confirmation bias, but that's not here, I think. no confirmation bias and also hindsight bias knowing what you know today you look back and see those uh, rituals that were there back then as hey 
this happens so fasting is actually today science knows that it is effective so the fasting that we practiced back then was for this reason that is hindsight bias well mark that to balance the three doshas improves eyesight strengthens the heart and enhances mind power and of course yeah three doshas is an idea from ayurveda which has no evidence and it's an appeal to tradition. Of course, this practice also helps to bring discipline into one's life as it makes you rise before the sunrise, allowing you to maximize the hours in the day. What is the significance of celebrating Ganpati Visarjan? Ten days after welcoming Lord Ganesha to our homes on the occasion of Ganesh Chaturthi, devotees bid adieu to Ganesh idols on the day of Anant Chaturdashi. But what is the purpose? Well, it's deep and sagacious. The Visarjan what does sagacious mean? Show us your dictionary, Fituba. The cycle of birth and death. It's a reminder that nothing is permanent and that change is the only constant. You have to do such expensive, extremely expensive, cost inefficient reminders, huh? It's a reminder that everyone who is born on this planet or that exists shall perish one day. But how does that make it scientific though? Moreover, the reason why the idols are immersed in a water body also has a profound meaning. The ocean or the water body represents the infinite and the idol is the soul seeking salvation. In the olden days, our ancestors were conscious enough to make Ganesha idols using herbs like turmeric, neem and clay which would not only get easily disintegrated but also render the water bodies clean. Why do we it's thrown in the oceans, right? I mean, why do you need the ocean water to be clean? You're not drinking it. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's thrown in the oceans, right? We not touch books with our feet. Oh my God. I don't want to hear this. Recently, there was this whole debacle with the Australian captain keeping his feet on the trophy. This whole prejudice against feet touching uh, you know, books or anything where you believe God is there comes from this idea that feet are impure. And also there is this, uh, this idea that your head is superior and the Brahman came from the head of the Brahma and the Shudra came from the feet of the Brahma. So there is that hierarchy there that is imposed on people, right? It's from the same idea that feet are considered impure. Well, our feet, even though they are very important, are considered to be the dirtiest part of our body in regard to the fact that they come in contact with the ground first. And so contact- It's a part of the body. The ground is not impure. With dust is inevitable. The outdoors may not be very clean as we would like it to be. Hence, a great effort has to be so made- So what about if you wear shoes and walk? Then your feet are clean, right? Hmm? to avoid stepping over someone, any food, utensils or box. Our culture has always regarded knowledge as sacred and divine and therefore must always be respected at all times. The ritual or custom of not touching any educational tools with our feet shows us the pedestal on which we put knowledge in Indian culture. So these were some of the common Indian Alright, summary, let's look at all this. Detox, by the way, is a scam. You can look it up. I've talked about this before, but I think otherwise we've spoken about all of these, right? Rituals, which I believe have a logic behind. This gives us an idea how intelligent our forefathers were in designing various rituals and hindsight bias customs for the holistic well-being of us and the environment. Did you find this video helpful? If you would like to see another part of this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Check out the tribe. How does giving a thumbs up Allow us to watch another part of the book. Concepts face brightening kit, which has two products. And the sponsors here. So I think the video is over. Let's go back to some final comments about this. Oh, by the way, let's look at what all PS we were able to spot over here. There is an appeal to tradition throughout the video when he talks about, you know, uh, traditions or even Ayurveda from years ago using science to just by beliefs. I wish confirmation bias was there on the grid. Anecdotal hindsight, rationalization, untestable claim. Yeah, these are, this is misinformation, right? Obviously. But I think that's about it. I can't spot anything else. I will end the video here. I think that's it. So, hope you enjoyed what you watched and I'll see you in the next one.